Name one pirated movie you remember. Oh, dude. You just get one? Well, what did you pirate? There's so many. Uh, there's so, there's many. so many. Like <laughs> when I went to college, I had like 37 gigabytes of got music. A, I got a that slew I didn't, of them. That I didn't pay for, right? I ended up deleting it all, right? Because I didn't need it anymore. Kevin Costner films. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just one folder. It's just one folder. It's like 10 movies in there. What up, Twisted World? We are back with my boys, Cody and Andy. What's going on, guys? Yo, I am Cody. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> so, hey, uh, I, I really wanted to do this last episode because it was our kickoff for the new year and I forgot. So, New Year's resolutions. Who's got them? Let's hear it. Cody, what you got? Oh, I did my New Year's resolution a little bit differently this year. Okay. So I'm doing seasons as opposed to, oh. uh, or like themes <laughs> as opposed to, why, why are you guys laughing? Seriously. I instantly think of a game where you're like, every <laughs> four months, you're like, you're like, we're in a new season, we're in? season of this. Yes. No, exactly. No, that's exactly right. So you're, so you're <clears throat> season you, of the blank or do you have a roadmap? theme. Yeah, I do have a roadmap. <laughs> okay. So can we, season, can we post this with this episode? <laughs> absolutely. So season one or mm-hmm. the first season, whatever you want to call it, I don't really have it for it, but there's a, uh, it's season of activity. Okay. okay. So in it's all, it's all about when you're being faced with an opportunity to do one thing or the other, you, you ask yourself, is this, I'm going to choose the one about the season, right? The one, the more active of the two options, right? I could either walk my dog or I could sit and play Matrix Path of Neo on my PS2 emulator in my room. Now, the one for the season of the active, uh, activity would be walking the dog, right? Okay. And I, so I would choose that option, yeah. right? So it just it's a change of season. And then season two is a season of the, uh, I think it, I forget what, what I called it. Maybe it's season of the new or season of the, of the skill. One of those. It's where I pick up a new hobby or skill. And I don't know what that's going to be yet. Uh, it could be a new musical instrument. It could be a new trade. I could nice. start collecting stamps. Who could be, knows? Could be magic cards. Yeah. It could be magic cards. Yeah. It possibilities are endless. Endless. Yeah. That's so. So you you've got it mapped out. Yep. Structured. Right. Ready to rock. How's it going so far? I haven't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Season activity not going so well. <laughs> it's going great. Just give it a minute. Okay. Check well, in with us next year. Well, we convene, yeah. Check in with us. <laughs> Get a recap on his. The fruits uh, of my labor will show. So, is it? Is it? How many seasons for twenty twenty two? It's four. four. Right? Every oh, four months he quarters. rotates. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're manageable amounts of time. A okay. year is just so much. <laughs> you know, <laughs> usually quit like a month in. So, <laughs> all right. Well, in this case, about a week. I mean, well, I mean, you did do the activity of setting up the seasons, so right, and that know. I did in December. And so you, it you was could, like a preseason. You could have chose to not do it. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was always that choice, it is. which I chose not to because that's not in the theme, right? Right. It's the theme of activity. Activity. I right. have one. Oh, yeah, let's hear it. I am determined to sneeze or cough further than six feet. <laughs> Apparently, scientists don't think it's possible, but I will prove them wrong. Okay. I'm. I'm just curious. How are you planning on measuring this? I don't know. With a yardstick. A yardstick? Yes. But do your well, well, I got I got a tape measure at home. Are you gonna put like a uh, like a piece of plexiglass? You wanna come, you wanna the come help? I mean <laughs> Listen, um, I just need to know if it hits your face. I don't know. <laughs> okay, apparently I, I can stand six feet from you and not get it on you. So I wanna see if, if it's it, seven feet I can hit just, you. Just splashes. I, you never know. If I feel a little Listen, missed. I, challenge accepted. Yeah. Well. Um so, I mean, I, you know, I always try not to do the, the, the weight loss thing, kind of, you know, I'm a big guy, uh, but the reality is, you know, after the, with the wedding and the end in the, in the holidays, went to Dallas to, to see the Cowboys in Cowboy Stadium, which was amazing. And, uh, I've just been eating nothing. John. I mean, I probably ate 7.8 pounds of gummy worms in three week period. Didn't uh, we have, yeah. What did I eat the other three? I think, I think so. Yeah. We had 10 pounds. Our wives are looking at us like, he's 
season of the junk, dude. Disgusting. Like we married these guys. No, I'm kidding. They love us. Uh, you know, guys, we we don't we don't have to be thin. You know, we're holly and jolly, right? So, no, no, we're not. No, <laughs> <laughs> who are you talking to? <laughs> holly, jolly. So now, nah, so fat and happy. So, so my New Year's resolution is, um, I, I'm just gonna consume cups of shredded lettuce every day and see how it works. It seems to work for rabbits and stuff. So I heard you can lose weight that way. They also have a shorter life expectancy. Yeah. Well, then there's that. But hey. But they have a ton of sex. That's my man. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Kids, cover your ears. Yes. That, he, he's talking about male, female sex, not like. <laughs> Is there really? Any kind? Really? Do we need to go into more detail on that? I was talking about gender. I'm like, pretty like, sure it was what like. What sex are you? I'm male. Sex I'm deep wow. dive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to put a disclaimer on this. Um, so why, hey, is it, why is it that Cody always has something to say that messes this up for me? I don't. <laughs> always. There's I just, always something. I just made that well, conversation 10 times better. I don't well, know what you're true. talking about. Well, it's about to get even better. Hey, before we get into our topic of today, I just, you know, we're about to, we're, we're, pressing some some high download numbers we appreciate all of our listeners all you guys out there if you guys haven't had a chance yet uh last episode birds aren't real um you know cody's gonna take his stance and firmly believes that they are 100 percent not real uh i'm still very skeptical I'm gonna throw it out there um but uh interesting episode a lot of stuff out there a lot of believers but a uh, great episode Thanks. if you haven't got a chance take a look at it download it check us out follow us uh we're on facebook we are on instagram we are on TikTok, Twitter, uh, but you can download on any of the major sites. So, as the analytic guy, as yeah. the analytic guy, a lot of yeah. people are listening, but not everybody's following. So, the following gives you the additional posts that we do and stories that we do. So, of course, we have family and friends that are doing that, but the people, I mean, we're having appro- approximately right now about 500 downloads a week, right? Yeah. Uh, that number is continuing to grow, but I want, I like to see that show up on the social media sites as well so that people can start commenting and adding feedback of their own. Even if it's to argue with us, as long as it, you know, we keep it PG. But yeah, keeping it all clean and everything on social media, I, I would love to see more interaction on the social media side. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, guys, if you, if you guys love us, if you enjoy us, if we make you laugh, if we entertain you, just, you know, do us a favor, follow us, you know, hit the, hit the subscribe button on any of the podcast sites, uh, TikTok, you know, we're going to be more and more ramping up on videos there, especially once we implement. Plus do it now before we sell out and we start doing like, you know, I don't know, fresh food ads. Yeah. Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Coming soon. Uh, no, but uh, I wanted to ask you guys about this. What do you guys think about putting a poll up on Twitter or Instagram about our next topic? We can put a list of topics out Ooh. there and say, hey, choose from these three so, and they can pick what we which can one they would do, want. What we can do is create a straw poll and I can actually put that link on all of our social media so that mm. we get it from every one. So, yeah. Yeah, not, I want to hear from so our listeners. That'd be, I wanna, yeah, yeah, I think that'd be awesome. I definitely uh, what we would do is probably better to set it out to like two weeks. Yeah. That way we can prep for it. But right. yeah, set it out and say we're looking for a topic in an upcoming episode and, and leave it open. If we can do a poll, are we going to do these like fillable? Are we going to have a couple of topics and have them pick from it? We can, we can do both, right? I mean, you can have a, yeah. on straw poll, you can do like three topics and then have a fill-in. We can have yeah. a custom fill-in yeah, yeah. if they want to do that. So I like that idea. I think that's great. I think we should definitely do it. So uh, if you guys, all you listening to this episode right now, just uh, keep an eye out for it. We're going to be launching it. Take a look. But again, yeah, follow us, you know, like, like us on uh, Facebook, uh, hit us on the, the Twitter, the Instagram and TikTok. We're on YouTube as well. Oh yeah. And video is coming. So coming. We'll working on it. Soon. So we're going to do something a little different, slightly different here. Okay. We did an off the cuff episode. I don't know, four or five episodes, six episodes back. The 9-11 uh, the one. one, where we just kind of all shot from the hip. Uh, Cody and I are prepared for this episode. Andy has absolutely zero idea what's coming. I don't like it. He has, he doesn't know the topic. That's why we did it. This is why we're doing it. Yeah. You know, Mr. I'm always right. We're going to find out what he thinks. So uh, I've, I've, titled this a few different things i'm just going to keep it for now for the moment we're just going to call it the mystery to keep him in the dark um but we're going to talk about an internet website Mm. this website was built in 1997 the domain was bought was was picked up in 1997 my understanding right cody correct and um the website is called mortis.com 
Mm. Are you familiar, Andrew? I am not. Are you familiar with the word mortis? I am not. It is Latin. Can you guess which word in the you know Latin language that might be associated with? I would assume mystery. Death. Death. Well, terrible. Terrible. Uh, yeah. I like mystery better. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So I actually coined the episode, and you know we'll figure out where the naming falls. But uh, you know, a couple couple of my one of my few options was the website of death, because mortis means death, like rigor mortis. Mm. Stiff death. Stiff death. So mortis.com. Hold on. Before we go into that. Oh. Um, fun fact. Or fun fact, possibly. It's rumored. <laughs> it's rumored that <laughs> the word mortis, when translated into Greek instead of Latin, oh. was a family name to someone who was immune to, black, to the Black Death, the Black Plague, back way back when, like I think 1300. And he um, buried most of the body because he couldn't get it. You help bury a lot of the body. Back so is then. this a play to his Ooh. name, or is this a play to the fact that maybe he's still around, or his family's we, still around? And we don't know. know. Who's to say? There's a lot to uncover about this shrouded website. It, hey, when so Cody brought this to me uh, a couple weeks before Christmas. We just briefly talked about it, and right out the gate, I'm like, okay, all right. And we instantly said, let's keep Andy in the dark and see what he thinks. So Mortis.com. It was a website. Uh, Andy, you're a computer guy. You know computers. You, you know how these things work. This, this, this website domain was purchased, uh, picked up, solidified, however, whatever it's done in that world uh, in 1997. About mid to late 2000, uh, the, the beginning of 2000s. Around 2012 is when this started to gain a little popular notoriety. Yeah. People were like, what is this? Uh, I found this uh, while researching something else. I stumbled upon this website and that's when a lot of like the, the Reddit sleuths and the 4chan sleuths started looking into this to try and look. Now the claim is, I mean, well, you can't get to the site today, first of all. No, it's, I checked it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you can't get to it. Um, it just comes up with some like invalid thing or whatever. You can't, you can't it's Apparently wrong. There, I, I'm Googling there, it. There is a spoof version of it called Mortis CC. Yeah. 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 But which it, we'll go into, but it's yeah. definitely, it's a whole, they've already sh proven somehow that it's, they, not they the have, same. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, the claim is when people were looking at it in 2012 before it was pulled off the internet, uh, or when this person posted it, there's no way to actually check whether this was on at 2012 or not, like whether it was the site was there at 2012 or not. Um, and I'll go into that in a minute. But uh, the claim is, is that when you went to this website, it was a black bag with nothing but the word Mortis. And when you clicked on the word mortis, then a username and password field pop up in white. Okay. And that's it. And that's all that you could see. Just mortis.com. It's very ominous, kind of like what's going on here. I mean, black's a very strong color. I don't know if that's the default. I don't think that's the default background for a web page. That's purposely put there. Purposely put. So, okay. you know, it should be white, but for some reason it's black. That's kind of eerie. Right. Um, so, but people tried to like, tried all sorts of things like guess admin you know the you know all the, the stuff you know you do when you have reddit sleuths well, looking on there and i had read that even some 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 hackers and that were running bots that would run like millions of passwords and username brute force and they it, well, one thing that i watched and read is that you know uh basic websites like if a single end of user like myself who you know maybe got some help to build some business website or something along the lines real basic website it would have gotten cracked by these guys. I mean, these guys could have done it because it wouldn't have been able to bear down the the amount of traffic, of traffic that was mm -hmm. happening that either the site would have crashed or they would have got into my site. This was impenetrable. Impenetrable. So uh, that, that's very odd, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it gets odder when we go a little deeper when she, we, we start discussing what possibly it was or was not. But one thing that I, I found was extremely interesting and uh, and I, then I found a comparison, which kind of blew me away. So somebody found in the the embedding of the coding for the for the site that it housed terabytes of information of data, terabytes. Okay, lots of big files, it, big files like thirty two gigabytes of right. you know these are single source files, not not blocked. Yeah, yeah. Well, they Dude. found one that was like thirty nine gigs by itself. Exactly. Just a, a standalone 39 And you think about file. it, in 97, even in 2012, that's a, that's a big file to download. Whoa. For an individual to own, you know, not, not even like a company yeah. to have, ter to, to host yeah. terabytes of data right. for an individual. 
That's True. a lot. It the is. largest, the largest retailer in the nation in the late '90s and early 2000s was Walmart. It may still be today. I don't know. But this, they they used this as a comparison. Walmart server was a seven terabyte server at that time, and they had billions and billions of dollars. Largest retailer, and this guy, this site housed terabytes. Well, Walmart's need was a little different. Right. In the, in, the, in the scheme of technology, Walmart built their system probably for sustainability. Somebody could own it at a much cheaper cost, but up, I mean, there'd be no reason for it, right? To have that much data. I mean, you think about it, like in 2012, let's just say 2012, it was probably before that this was taken down, but let's say 2012, because I was reading some on here, 2012, 2013. To have something that's multi terabyted back then, um, I mean, you, you have an untapped amount of money to be able to pull something like that yeah, off. That's if, you're, if you're an individual, strange. A strange amount of money. With like, you go to the site, it doesn't do anything. You can't Um, buy anything. You can't like Cody said. People can't even get in. It was just username and password. Some people have claimed to get in, but it's also been, uh, you know, I'm seeing that people saying they logged in and downloaded like 10 gigs before they got kicked out or whatever. But like, it all seems to be disproven. Yeah, I don't. I've not researched it enough to know. But for an individual to buy something like this, I mean, unless they're wealthy to start, that would be the only reason. Unless it's a group of people doing this. Let's talk about the individual first. I mean, we they have they, an individual. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So as the investigation grew and <laughs> so they, what they did is you can look up register, uh, reg, like you can where, see who owns the domain. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can see who what, is. The, what the name is of the register <laughs> who owns the, the, uh, these domains. Right. So here's a list of, uh, I'll show you. Here's a list of domains, uh, right here. I don't know. Take a look at those. Um, you'll notice those are all domains owned by a person named Thomas Lane. Okay, do you see that? See those names listed there? Yeah. For purpose for the rest of this podcast, we're just going to call him Tom. Yeah, Tom, Tom. Tom's fine. Tom's fine. Tom's Lane DDS. Yeah. Awesome. So He's it, definitely a dentist. Yeah, it looks oh, like, looks oh, like no, no, no. He, he's a lot he's, of different things. He's a lot of things. So we'll, We found. So there's a... <laughs> there's also a Karen Lane and a Joshua Lane. And a Jeffrey Lane. And a Jeffrey Lane. So, uh, which is really interesting. A lot of those names sound... So another thing, to, but the way this works, when you actually look up like who owns domain names, you can only look up like Thomas Ling and it'll give you a bunch of different, it could be a bunch of different Thomas Ling. You know what I mean? Could be a bunch of different things leading you back to that person. But the thing that the, the commonality that links them together is their uh, publisher or their, uh, what's it called? There's a, there's a name on the far right there. Yeah. The registrar. So the the, reg- the registrar owns the domain. The reg- the well, the registrar is the, is the, uh, the host. No, it's the uh, it's the company that goes through and uh, gets you the domain. So, let me, yeah. So it's uh, you see these things that are like Pear Newton Incorporated and GoDaddy.com. So right. GoDaddy.com would be the registrar, right? Right. And so the things that the commonality between them is the Pear Network Incorporated, yes. right? So you take out all those and you you only look at the Pear Networks Incorporated, and that narrows it down. Do you still have those things like Mortis.com? Jeffrey Lang, Joshua Lang, Karen. Lang. Well, and I want to, so I want to throw another one that was connected because how, so he's connecting the dots here, right? Mm-hmm. There was another site called Cthulhu.net connected to Mortis.com. Even more ominous. Connected how? Same registrar. Same registrar. Same name. Same Thomas, Thomas Lang. Thomas Lang. Okay. okay. Yep. So when you go to, when you would go to it, it would be a black background. Correct. With a silhouette of a white chest piece. And when you clicked on it, it popped up and it said dead but dreaming and yet again had a login username and password which could not be had are you familiar with cthulhu no so cthulhu is a character from hp lovecraft and like horror novels horror novels yeah um it's it, it has to deal with someone's descent into madness and cthulhu is like this like ominous monster thing and one of the lines in there is like cthulhu I don't know. We're, we're getting into horror stuff. <laughs> stuff yeah, he's, he's, stuff he's like, he's like staring you. off like there's something behind like, me. I was like, please stop. Something behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, hey, hey, Cthulhu, what's um, going on? So, so anyways, this like, you know, tentacle it, demon. It thing was like Lovecraft's number one. If I've seen it, I probably don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a description. It was his number one bad guy and all, and all. It was like the head of all the monsters and everything that Lovecraft wrote about. Cthulhu yeah. was like the number one, right? Yeah. yeah. And so again, so the, the site is Cthulhu.net and it was a chess piece. Yeah, kind of cool, but ominous. Black ominous background, mystery. white 
silhouette, and then it said "dead but dreaming." And again, it's a reference to the one books. of Lovecraft. Yep. Uh, two, uh, two novels. Love, two novels that Lovecraft had written. Right. Uh, so, Tom, as you had put, you seen it was DDS, right? The the guy um, was actually connected to multiple different professions: uh, a lawyer, dentist, an artist, an artist. Um, there was a, another site, which this is the only one. And what we're going to go over when, when Mortis.com went down, all of the connecting sites went down simultaneously. Most, uh, most of them. All but one I, is what I saw. All but one. Was a, it's a. Well, actually there's two there, but go ahead. I'll let oh, you. Oh, the only one. So the one I saw was a. Dental fill-ins. Oh no, I didn't see that one. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh no. I saw a, a quilting one. And yes. so I went and looked it up and it's a weird site. Like you go through it and you're like. What is this site about? But it's a it's like quilt. And so you're just like, what do you do here? Let me explain this one. It's called, okay, so the way you get to quilt, the quilt website, it's at a site called exercio.com. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. Yeah. Exercio.com. This one was made in 1990. Exercio.com is still up today. It's still up. You, you, you go can to go it. to this one today. Although what it is, it's just a small little bare bones directory. Yeah. It has four little links in it. Right. It has, I wrote them down here. It is quilts.html, quilts underscore files, robots.txt, and a sale. Right. Looks like some sort of store. I don't, I don't know what the sales. There's like, there's something about quilts. Yeah. So, um, if you know about HTML or you know anything about like computers, you know that an HTML file is actually a link to some sort of web page. Right. So that's what's most interesting about this is when you open up quilts.html, Oh no! What did you look up? The Wayback Machine. Okay, so it's oh. not on the Wayback Machine. But Cthulhu is, and so is Mortis. No, it's redacted. It's been redacted. It's not. I'm looking at it right now. Let me see it. It's just a photo. Like so, for this one, it's the Cthulhu right? Uh, you just can't you can't activate it, but they're, they're, they take screenshots on the Wayback. Well, the Wayback Machine, according to archive.org, stated that the URL had been excluded. It was requested and removed um, from the Wayback Machine. Not Cthulhu.net. I'm looking at it right now, as you can see. That's all it says. And of course, when you do the Wayback Machine, they can exclude, they can, they can exclude functionality. Okay, well, let me ask but you this. Generally, snapshots can stay. Supposedly, when this went down in 2012, um, the domains still belong, the domains still belong to Thomas Ling up until 2020. Okay. And in 2020, they were re up. Somebody oh, like re repaid for them. Re yes. Somebody repaid for the domains. They still, they have now have an, a, a um, an expiration of twenty. So is this coming back? I I, I want to get to the point where to where, what this is, or we just not know. We don't know. But see, no, there's don't. there's some other pieces we're going to add in, and this is where we're gonna we're gonna try to so, do a little speculation here ourselves. Before we get to the Cthulhu.net stuff, let's yeah. just let's just finish up. Yeah, the, you're good. You're good. Sorry. Thing. Yeah. So, um, so when you click on quilts.html, you're taken to a web page, what which looks like someone's like it's like an art project type thing. Where they've got a bunch of quilts listed there with some with some captions on them. and then some, you've got a header with some uh, some other pictures of what looks like some a woman and then you've got a couple of different like symbols up there right now if you look at the bottom left and right quilt on the bottom of the page there it says jeffrey's jeff's first quilt and then it has josh's first quilt <laughs> on there right and now jeffrey and josh are both names we saw on the domains page that joshualang.org and the Jeffrey Ling, right? So we have reason to believe that this quilt website is actually <laughs> Karen's, KarenLings.com's placeholder. Like that's, it's supposed to be what KarenLing.com is supposed to be. Because there's a woman on the page, we're assuming right, right. that's Karen Ling, right? Yeah. What's most interesting about the this Karen. page. Karen's. It's always the Karen's. It always. It's the, always the Karen's. Common Karen. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, when you go to the top of this, when you go to the header of this quilt page, there's a symbol that says uh, DFI. Yeah, DFI. And it's like a kind of like a just some sort of logo. It's doesn't look like there's anything significant about it. But when you go to another page that is owned by Thomas Lang, dentalfillins.com, which went up in, I think, 98. Um, and it's about a dental office in San Francisco. When you go to that page, which is still up, by the way, you go to that one and you go to their FAQ page, that same logo is in the top right corner. It's the same one from the site. And dental fill-ins, DFI. Dental. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's probably the where play. that comes from. Right. Yeah. So that's the connection there. So we can, we can confirm that 
all these sites are linked together through the quilt study. We can confirm that all these pages are owned by the same person who's doing the DDS stuff, who has mortis.com, yeah. who has, uh, you know, the, you know, the exercio.com, all that stuff. Well, and, and talking about this dental firm and he supposedly a prominent lawyer, um, and then something, there's another other piece where it was another site was connected to a part of the Washington state and some security company that had connections to Usenet. Um, a, I guess, which is a predecessor of the World Wide web. Um, when they run the physical addresses on all these things, it comes up these empty, large, vacant lot with empty warehouses on it. So now you've got all these supposedly prominent businesses, a law firm and a dental office and all these different things. And when you, and again, you know, Washington state and you connect back, you're looking at empty lots. So why? Right. Um, I, I know that Reddit was blowing up with this. There, there was just tons and tons of information out there. Uh, 4chan had, you know, they had it on their, their technological piece. They had it on their, uh, paranormal piece board and boards, excuse me. And when all this stuff went down, uh, everything was removed at one point regarding anything that had any kind of resource that had to do with the, you know, the guys that were like trying to hack it and stuff like that. And one Reddit guy who was trying to re- get into these sites heavily supposedly had a Thomas Ling, Mr. Tom himself, reach out and say, Hey, stop trying to get into my site. And when they requested proof that he was, uh, or before that, before that, he said, Hey, stop trying to get into my site. I just use it for wedding photos. I use terabytes of information and my weird, ominous sites to house wedding not photos. In the nineties, you did not well, that much. Not that much space, bro. Right. So this this Thomas well, we thing don't came know, in, We don't know if that much space was being used in the night. We just know the domain was pretty. Uh, terabytes were being used. Oh, you just well, we I'm know not at least twenty twelve. Right. No, we right. don't even know that because there's no verifiable. Proof. Okay, so this is just an assumption. These are all claims. Right. Well, how many pictures? How many pictures? Uh, you guys would know better than me, would consume up even a single terabyte. A photo, well, that is, it depends on the quality, quality of the photo, photo. right? Okay. So you think about like on a phone now, yeah. so like a brand new iPhone, you're probably 11 to 12 megabytes per photo, maybe more. We go back into the 90s, let's say 90, 2012, there's a range there, but photos aren't any bigger than, it depends on, again, depends on the, I'm thinking in comparison to like phones or yeah. DSLR, you're anywhere from maybe like one to four megabytes. Maybe more uh, per photo. So what are we it talking? Would, tens of thousands to even a coo- to hit terabytes. Oh, yeah. uh, you're you may be closer to millions, if not billions. So that's what he claims. To so hit he, terabytes of just photos. So, so now, video could be larger, but in the in the '90s, I think '90s, right? Somebody builds it, doesn't have the data right away, and if he's building this as a wedding storage type site, it would take a lot of weddings and a lot of time to accumulate that much storage. Assuming you don't get rid of. Now, most professional photographers don't get rid of their 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 negatives. Yeah. They keep them. Well, because people could always come back years later and get them. This quick-witted Reddit guy goes, uh, so you, you built a site to store your terabytes of wedding photos, and you named it Mortis.com? So you named your wedding after death? I'm assuming he didn't respond, uh, correct? <laughs> he, he disappeared. Yeah, he never responded. Yeah, maybe. I mean, when, when they asked for proof, If there is legitimate to, legitimacy to it, maybe the Mortis has another meaning to him. There's a couple of different like claims like that where they're like, oh, yeah, I met the guy. I met Thomas Ling. He was in an IRC chat with me. And- <clears throat> we had him verify by putting something on the website for like five seconds on the homepage and then taking it down. And it's just all very fishy because it's like there was no verifiable proof right. of even this conversation taking place. Just all speculation from 4chan yeah. and Reddit. And Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, one more thing to uh, to verify or not. One more thing that we can that we do know about the the Thomas Ling and uh, Mortis dot com stuff is. The type of things that he at least was downloading and possibly using site, right? So uh, are you familiar with uh, BinSearch or Usenet? Yes. Okay, so old. Uh, yeah, it's super old, yeah, right? That's yeah, so that was one of the things, Usenet. Yeah. There was a connecting to it. Exactly. To it. So Usenet, uh, I guess, uh, now you might, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I might be butchering this or explaining it poorly, but so how it would work is you would, it, Usenet, it's kind of like, not really like a VPN, but it's kind of anonymous. There, w- This was before BitTorrent. Um, so the way you would kind of download things is you would involve yourself in different news is what they were called. And there were just kind of like associating your, your email address with different libraries. 
Um, your email address is kind of like tied to this in a certain way. Yeah, it, the news groups, discussion groups, you would go in and you would have that. Yeah, exactly. And you would go into these different news groups and you would be able to search for different kinds of things to rip like movies or shows or photos or what news articles, whatever you want. Right? Like you wanted to download some, di some, some dirty stuff, dirty stuff. You, this you, is you the place to do group. it because it's right. anonymous. It's right. It's before BitTorrent and before VPNs for all that fun stuff. It's, it's like the anonymous web, right? Right. So you go on there and you would do this stuff. And if you knew the email address of a user and a news group that he was associated with, you could find out what they were downloading. Right. Or what they had down. So that's, and because of Cthulhu.net, we know that Cthulhu at Cthulhu.net is a working email address because it was listed on the site at one point. Right. So people took that email address and involved it with numerous news groups. And they were able to find downloaded content from this user. History. Exactly. So what they found was. Oh, I didn't find this. Oh, you didn't see this? No. Yeah. Okay. So what, what they found was that found some files posted by this guy, gibberish names at 25 gigabytes, right? The file name is drivecrazy3dbd25.par2 without, without a password. And when you search for drive crazy, also this post on 4chan is in 2011. Okay. Okay. So right before <clears throat> the sites came down. Correct. Okay. Right before the sites came down. This post was in 2011. When you search drive crazy on you on Google, it comes up with a movie called Drive Angry in 2011, starring Nicolas Cage. So people think that this was him downloading a drive crazy like or drive angry movie rip during uh, that time so they think that the what was on yeah they think that much harder to do back then yes this would have been the way to do it they it, always came in an archive form so part two is actually parkive 2 i've used that software it's very old similar to zip right that we yep, use now exactly uh, you've been ripping pirated stuff way back in the day oh, bro. way back in the day listen, listen. you know listen. that the people are listening you know hey listen like lime come wire, at me bro <laughs> It'll so, all be torched. So the one of the working theories is that uh, Mortis.com is just a site kind of like your at-home Netflix. It's just where he stores all of his RIP stuff, gives the password and username to his friends. It was like the at-home. Like a Plex server. Exactly. So a Plex server is where you would, we, we, we create a server at your house. Yeah. You put all your ripped or digital content in, and then you can give a login to your family members, your friends, and they can log into your site. So this guy was selling pirated stuff. Correct. So he's not really a dentist or anything like he that. We're not looking, necessarily he was, selling. He could have just had all this and said, hey, I, I want my friends and my family to be able to access it. That, but it makes sense that he's selling it because he has so many different businesses that he's starting up. Did you see all the things he was yeah. starting up on yeah. all of his websites? Trying to be a lawyer, trying to set up stuff for his kids. The, the quill, quill, quill business. business. Yeah. Shell Corporation. D DDS. Yes. I was, so, I was starting to think, man, is he like weaving crack cocaine in, in these quilts? <laughs> like how much are these quilts running for? <laughs> <laughs> what are they named? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little Wayfair action up in this. <laughs> He's got his own thing. Uh, one thing I saw too was that, that Mortis website had numerous email accounts registered to it on the server, right? With names like Igor, Mortis, Blair, Child of Chaos, mm, yes. and just a bunch of other just off the wall names. It was like, uh, so what, I mean, what do we, is this what we're, so we're looking at a guy that's possibly pirating uh, movies. At the time, I mean, well, I never even heard of that movie. Mind, I, I know a lot of Nicolas Cage. I was just telling my wife mind, I love Nicolas Cage. I've never even heard all right, of that movie. Not all, but most is technical that, guys that do stuff movie? like this are a bit nerdy, right? Yeah. We think about like the original torrenting sites were called Morpheus. Yeah. LimeWire. Like a lot of them were very nerdy and they had plays to Dungeons and Dragons, magic, lore, all of those things in some way. So to me, I'm not seeing the, the mystery behind the fact that like it's very possible this guy had it. It's very possible he just named it Mortis because he knew the ties to death, and he's got a thing. He's emo or whatever, and he's like he likes the ties to the dark, the horror, the, the you know. To me, there's I, we don't know of anything criminal at this point. No, any we type have people, no idea. No, but, and they do know that there was a media player, I guess, embedded in the that's um, correct. the in the programming of it. After yeah, after going through their I think pages and pages of source code on yeah. the on the front facing website of Mortis.com. They were able to identify a type of media. So if he had me, if he had video content up, he could. I mean, again, that still that doesn't disprove the wedding theory, wedding movies, wedding photos. I, I store them there. It doesn't. And um, somewhere along I the would, way, the FBI got involved, right? Yeah. Th so well, that's that's also speculation because there's no way to 
or well, if there, were, yeah. if there were proof that he was downloading illegal content back then, copyright issues were hit pretty hard in 97, 98, because that's when Morpheus got hit, taken down by Metallica lawsuit. Yeah. Um, it's very possible that because of that, they were setting a wide net, and this was something that came up and thought, well, this looks suspicious, and they would have more information than we do. Well, but also, you know, we can take to the, the flip darker side. Uh, the reality is, is in the early 2000s, you know, the snuff films, and even as, as disgusting as it is, Child pornography was buried heavily in in certain websites where people could download these things, and you know we know that because there's been a lot of individuals, some some high value power names, uh, like that dude. What's that dude on that TLC show? There's like twelve, twenty kids, um, and one of them is now up on child pornography charges. Oh, man. TLC, you're talking about like way back when? No, recent, like recently going on. There's like the Duggars. No, it's the one that's like it. They're like the, they're like a good Christian family out in the Midwest somewhere. Oh, you're talking got about like the Duggars? Tw- yeah, that's what I just said. That's oh, what I don't. Said. Man, I don't watch <laughs> this stuff. I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> like, who's the Duggars? I didn't hear you You're talking about the Duggars, right? Where the one I don't know. The There's the like twenty thousand kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kate and something plus I, yeah. eight. Something 20, like that. Not that one. That one. That's no, like twenty thousand and counting. He's or something? talking. About, he's ten ta- kids and counting. <laughs> Fifteen kids and counting. He's talking about the Duggar family. I did see this about. I think it's one of the sons, not the actual. One of the sons. He's married. Beautiful family. 19 and kids and counting. 19 kids and counting. I know, like 20,000, whatever. I, you know, just keep <laughs> popping out kids. It doesn't matter at that point. Uh, so the, the oldest son is up on child pornography charges, you know, and again, it's a rampant thing. Right? It happens all over. So here's this ominous website. And again, like Andy puts it, you know, you got some, some, com- some computer nerd like, hey, I'm going to put all this dirty stuff up here. I'm going to call it mortis.com. And then I'm going to do Cthulhu.net. Hey. Um, so nobody knows, nobody has any clue. We do know the domain was rebought. Both these domains are all rebought up by the same Mr. Thomas Ling. Uh, we have no idea if this guy's real or not. Uh, I'm just, I, I'm really curious. I, I would hope that one day it comes out if they can find some, but if you figure if the FBI did get involved, they would have the ability to figure this out, right? Is this feasible? Like, I'm sure it would have somehow come out in the news by now. To me, not knowing all the information you guys have, it leans more towards piracy, right? And the idea, so 99 Napster comes out. That's, I was saying Morpheus. Morpheus is what came out after Napster. Napster was legit. Napster was the original one. It was a client. (laughs) Now, now keep in mind, keep in mind, there were ways of getting pirated software, movies, whatever before this, but it was a lot harder to do. Well, not a lot harder. It required a lot more effort on the, on the person's behalf. Napster, what it did is it simplified it to a way where people that aren't very technical were able to go in, type in a search, search and get everything. And then this is the one that I believe was shut down because you Metallica, had, served, uh, they actually sued for the first copyright. You had to be like tech savvy, man. Because I remember movies. If you want to pirate movies, you waited for some dude like at my place of business. He'd roll up in some broke down. Right. Explorer, flip out a bring CD up a hatch. And like, yo. He's like, hey, come look at my box. And then you get it. And it's like. A it, camera upside down. Yeah, in the movie walking. theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can hear three people next to him eating popcorn, smacking. That, that right, right. So, so to me, because that. of the timeline, right. <laughs> so you think about it. Mortis <laughs> drops in two ninety seven. Before this, you had Ben Search and, and Usenet, which, by the way, Usenet started in nineteen seventy nine. So it's an old software. Ben Search came a little bit after that, but the concept was is that it was easier and less regulated. Usenet was still regulated, as you can see. We were able to type in the username, password, or not a username, but at least the email and say, okay, I can see the history of what you've done. Even though it had a little bit of privacy, it was still, as long as you knew the information, you were able to get it. With something like um, Napster and those types of things, it added in an element to where you were still able to be tracked, but it was peer-to-peer, right? So I was going to yeah. be connecting with you directly rather than going to a news group where my stuff would be logged and tracked. N- now we've gotten a lot further along. There's a lot of stuff out there now that was a bit torrenting. You, you need VPNs to get around all that stuff. But the reality is, to me, it leans more because of the timeline. It leans more towards the conspiracy around maybe the idea of privacy. If somebody's coming hard at me and saying, what's this side? What's this? Why do you have all this data? And I'm pirating. And at this time, you have a lot of pressure from copyright infringement. The, the FBI are the ones that put the policy on the front of the movies that right. say not to do this. It's illegal. Right. It's federal yeah. crime. FBI warning. Right. So it makes it. I mean, it could be something else. Um. But again, you think about all the names of all the different applications over the years that came out for piracy. They've all got some kind of play to them. So, so I'm going to be real. So one time I, I did, did buy one of those DVDs, right? And you know how the thing pops up. FBI warning, right? Hey, look, you guys know way more about computers than I do. And the thing pops up and I'm like, man, I wonder if they can trace this. Like, can they trace this through my power cable? I'm listening here watching this DVD. I think I'm knocking. I'm, I'm getting rid of this. 
but I got rid of it anyways because the guy smacking in the theater drove me absolutely nuts. Uh, so what's up with the connecting addresses? <laughs> the like, you know, is that um, just to throw people off? Like, hey, here's again, a, here's again, an address: empty so lot with warehouses. Early gen, early gen. Is that where the stores? Pirators aren't thirteen year old kids sitting in front of computers like they are today, right? right. These are guys that had. Wait, he wait, was wait, wait, probably back up, back up. trying to make money <laughs> off of this. Thirteen year old kids are doing this stuff. I'm sure they are, dude. Nowadays, it, it's not uncommon. But whatever happened to just There's playing YouTube tutorials for this yard. kind of stuff? <laughs> but, but, but YouTube tutorials. There was a lot more money to be made back then. Post that link off of piracy <laughs> or link and buy it. The idea of you were going to do this to free people from having to pay for these things—that it should all be freedom, right? Yeah. So you wouldn't go out and put things in your own name. And the reality is, buying a domain, you don't need a lot of real so, information to buy a domain. But still, back to the fact that you know, there's. There is a lot of, you know, like the, the couple videos that I watched on YouTube, they kind of said the same thing, right? That it was probably some pirating site, so on and so forth. Get it. That's the most simplest explanation. Okay. Totally get it. The ones that do it, then they go, okay, but it doesn't necessarily explain, you know, like the individual to have that much uh, data running through his site would have needed, again, so you had Walmart with seven terabyte in the early 2000s. The guy would have had to have money, right? So is this guy just, He's so rich. He's got nothing to do. He's like, eh, I'm going to let a bunch of people pirate videos. It just bored them. It makes me believe that maybe there was profit through this, this model. The, the, the only thing that would concern me is nothing stays secret for long. Right. Right. And the fact that we are now from 97, 2012 to now, and we still don't know what's happened. If this was about profit, there would be something. There'd be a business card. There'd be a photo. There'd be a link. There'd be an email. There'd be something because nothing ever really truly disappears on the internet. Yeah. So that's the only part of it that makes me go, maybe there's more to it than that. And his security was so strong that some of these guys that wrote some of these great bots, it like it didn't even phase the site. I mean, that the, like the one that guy we was, know of, the one guy was watching, uh, he, he broke this whole, and again, you guys know way more about the stuff than I do, but he broke this whole thing down about how, if it was just a, a standard site with standard security, it would, it would have crushed, you know, a lot of these bots would have just crushed it with. The, the amount of attempts that it would have done in a matter of seconds. And this thing didn't phase. Like it stayed, it stayed running. It, you know, uh, again. Apparently he felt threatened enough to take it down in 2012 though. So something must have Well, that's happened. where the speculation of the FBI thing comes in. Again, there's no proof. You can't find any FBI record. I've, I've searched for um, any proceedings or anything along those lines. You don't find anything. You can't even find, if you search this guy's name, you find all sorts it's of different because he's uh, not real. He's not real. Yeah, he's he's definitely an alien. And there is a Dennis Thomas Lang, by the way. Yeah, he San Francisco. Exists. He exists. Yeah. Oh no, no, that no that's exists. yeah. So I'm assuming they use real names to throw people off. That these yeah. are real names, and I bet you he has kids named Jen, or, you know Jeffrey and Karen and you know whatever. Yeah. But I or Joshua. But um, can you? So he can you, ma- can you make up the quilt thing? No, but 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 again, that's what makes me yeah. lean towards if those are all tied in that in that sense, and they're all tied together in some way, and there's all these hidden things and whatever. It doesn't disprove private piracy. Was there a true connect between those other than the owner? Like, did they link to one another? Did they, was it, was there a site that, that goes from here to here? So DFI on this one. So maybe he had a branding thing where he wanted everything on. So there's a lot of different reasons to blame that out. The quilt thing doesn't like, it's just a weird site. It, it doesn't have, it, a, it links Thomas Ling that it links all of them together, including the dental office that you're talking about. So reading in here, it says that there, there is no link from those to Mortis and Cthulhu. That those sites were actually separated out. Even though they have an ownership, they show the registrar, they show the owner. It's they, the, Thomas Ling's the name, and they have the same registrar. Right, but they don't have a physical connection, correct? There's no... Yeah, they don't like... They don't actually like... Right. So There's like, this isn't on here. And there's like nothing that, saying that the like quilt the thing was... It's like, hey, mortis.com. Well, there's nah. nothing saying that, the, that, the, that the, the quilt thing isn't a legitimate business attempt, and she just didn't follow through with it. I mean, I... I in, in high school, I built the front page, which was what you would use to build websites. Did a similar what thing. What year was this? 98. Did you have terabytes of uh, information? No, but again. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Back I, up. I had, you, were, you were building sites in 98? Yeah. I, Are you by any chance? Run well, I would like to point out, Tom? has anybody, <laughs> act, did anybody actually look at the date that that site was made? It was like Cody no. should go and look at that date. Oh, oh let's look at the date. It's Andy's birthday. <laughs> no, it's not mine. It's my birthday. It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mortis.com was made on my birthday two years after I was born. Two years after he was born. FBI, if you're listening, save me. I was 12. (laughs) Um, Well, you just said 13-year-olds are pirating, though. I I I was pirating. You're a smart individual. I was using Morpheus. (laughs) 
I was using Morpheus. I was using Napster. I was, I, people want to come at me. It's fine. But the reality. I was pirating. It was, it was popular back then. <laughs> there wasn't these, as much disclaimers. The, the world starts blowing up with Reddit users going, is Andy really Thomas Lent? Hey, we do not know. He, he could be. My first real job was at a dental office. Wow. Dr. Jang. Dr. Wow. Ling. Do- Dr. Jang. <laughs> Ling DDS. <laughs> so, so we don't, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is nobody really knows. There's some great, there's some great videos on YouTube. A lot of it's fun to read. Uh, Reddit, uh, this thing, I guess, blew back up I, when I, I guess the, the site domains were rebought. And that's why you'll see like some of the YouTube videos are only a few months old. Like they're like, one was in September of yeah. 2021. And as the voice of uh, reality reason. on this podcast yeah. and, and reason, uh, my guess is, is that person probably has a fear of something happening with it. So I wouldn't let it go either. I'd probably hold on to it forever in the event that maybe somehow somebody would spoof it or do something and it would, it would kind of light in somewhere I don't really want the light shine. Well, somebody into. already did. I mean, there's a Mortis C- CC. Dot CC yeah, which it's a login res- page. Resembles identically what the Mortis.com is. Uh, but I guess when you run in to see who the registrar and all that is, is something completely different. Yeah, it's just a fan yeah, page. I saw that it was, yeah. it was a fan page. Somebody made it alone. Um, right. it, was, it was proven legitimate. They're just trying to get traction. Um, so, whether it's pirated Nicolas Cage movies that, you know, I've seen, I still, Cody just showed me this movie and I'm like, man, I've seen a lot of Nicolas Cage movies. I do not remember that one at all. Drive angry. Remember yeah. the gauge for the best? Kind of acting and the worst kind of acting, Nicolas Cage. He is the benchmark for True. for a good and bad movie. True, but that was right around the time he was making pretty solid. Not all. He was making a solid money. Let's be real. Yeah, well, that's true. Solid money. So he probably took you know any movie he could get, but not all scripts are created equal. So, but uh, to pirate of movies of all movies, like you pirate one that's I don't know. Hey, maybe movie. I, bus, I would I guess. say hey. I would say cost alone. If I'm putting uh, put it into perspective, yeah, I, I'll, I'll I worked that. for the dental office. Um, up until 2006, 2000. Wait, you weren't joking. You really did work for a dental office. I did. I did. Oh. It was my very <laughs> one of my very first jobs. I I, I broke down. You were just memeing. Yeah. <laughs> I broke down rooms. I w- I did files. I was an insurance coordinator, and I was also their technical support. I took then his name, Mr. Jing, Edward Jang, then Panol. Listen, yeah. that's some weirdo stuff. No, man. it's just listen. It is what it is. My, my aunt worked there. That was kind of how I got the hook up on the job. It was a great job, and then I went to college. But the point I'm trying to make is, back then I got a. <laughs> I got a one gig flash drive. Now, flash drive. Now, yeah. you could get gigs in your computer and hard drives, but a one gig flash drive. Back yeah. then, and this was probably 2003, 2004, and he used to give Christmas gifts, and all the girls would get, you know, coach purses. I got a one gig flash drive, and I remember at that time, like a one gig flash drive was like 350 bucks, right? Now, ma- mm, mind really? you, my, and I'd never seen one. The biggest one I had at the time was 256 megabytes. Yeah. I'd never seen a one gig flash drive. I was blown away at the fact that he bought this for me and he spent that much money on me. But, the reality is, back then, we're talking about smaller flash. Now, and I remember when I was a kid, probably about 12, 13, my dad upgraded to like a 64. No, my dad had a smaller hard drive. And my neighbor, his dad, had bought a 64 gigabyte hard drive for the computer. I mean, it was like a few thousand dollars for 64 gigabytes. Wow. Right? And it was just like Crazy. mind-blowing. It, like, oh my God. It's like nowadays when you hear somebody say they get like a 3090 in their computer and, and you're like, oh my God, you spent $2,000 on a graphics card. That's how it felt back then to have that kind of... 64 gigabytes is nothing. Right. But again, 97, the size of the, the amount of space, this dude would have to have dough, massive dough. So if he was Dennis Doe, let's, let's, let's say more than Dennis Doe. No, more than Dennis Walmart Doe. Walmart Superstore's no, Doe. No, we're talking, we're talking more than Dennis Doe. So, <laughs> well, I, could, I mean, he could have acquired it over a long period of time. If, if, and again, I'm not saying that I believe it, but if this was criminal to the point, not piracy, because piracy, whatever, okay? You're not making tons and tons of money on the piracy side. No. But let's imagine that this is into the, the child stuff. There's a lot of money to be made there. We talk back on to the episode yeah. where we talk about the island, right? right. And, the, and, and all the ties to yeah, that got, type of stuff. They got filthy rich. Off um, dirty all stuff. of those people are ridiculously wealthy. If this guy was willing to go through this and had the money resources to come in to be able to block and do all this, it's possible that he had the, the money and the resources to be able to fund something like this, including the security. So what you're telling me is Thomas Lang is friends with Epstein. It's probably an anagram. Have you guys like put the words together try to figure out what it spells? Oh no, but I think there's a program that does that, right? Probably. You can just punch little, it in. A lot of websites. Oh yeah. Well, you guys would know. Well, I Reddit spent the last, you know, 20 years looking at this thing and still can't figure it out. So. Right? 
No, I think it's just some dentist who put up some stuff for D- digital photographs of people's teeth. Is, well, no, no, I think it's just I think he's wedding just, photos. I think he's just ripping movies. I don't know that it's a dentist, and I don't know that it's anything related to what they have. If, if I so if I go back and I'm thinking of the way that it was back then, we ninety seven. This was a couple of years before the big lawsuit that changed the thing about piracy with music, right? right? But I think about movies at the time were already kind of having that problem. If I think about my, my attempt, I was pirating movies. So I was pirating stuff like that back late 90s. If I'm thinking about this truly, I, I mean, I used to make jokes to my mom. Like, if people show up, I want you to, like, set my computer on fire. I'm not joking. Hey, like, we're, we're, name one pirated movie you remember. Oh, dude. You just get one? Well, what did you pirate? There's so many. Uh, there's so many. There's so many. <laughs> like, when I went to college, I had, like, 37 gigabytes of got music. A, I got a that slew I of them. That I didn't pay for, right? <laughs> I ended up deleting it all, right? Because I didn't need it anymore. Evan but... Costner films. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's just one folder. It's just one folder. It's like 10 movies in there. He's like, gotta get that field of dreams. No, I mean, I'm, uh, for real. For real. But to keep in mind, back when I was doing John this... Cusack. <laughs> yeah. John Cusack films. Back when just... I was doing this, I had like an 80 gig hard drive. Like a 25 gig hard drive. And that was expensive. It was expensive. So how, many, so how many movies? Okay, okay. So eighty gig hard drive. How many? How many movies did you have on an eighty gig hard drive at that time? So back then, because of quality of the TVs and where we were at, yeah. most movies were anywhere from two to four hundred megabytes. Okay, they were they were under a gig. Yeah. So to fill an eighty gig hard drive, maybe a few thousand movies. This guy had terabytes. I mean, <laughs> and I didn't sell them. What I would do is I'd keep them for myself. I'd rip them onto a DVD. This guy I'd was like the friends. underground blockbuster going on over here. Like, yeah. Well, that's what makes me believe. So. Doesn't mean that HD wasn't in, in existence. There's just not a lot of stuff that could play it back then. Yeah. Um, let's imagine like a two hour, you know, child thing. They could be big. The reality is the size would scare me if it is that. Like it's a little unfathomable to believe that these are downloaded movies unless he's downloading the entire internet at the time. Right. Right. Um, we don't know the timeline though. You know well, I mean? you know, no, 97 we do know that is when it was created. 2097. 2011 is when the terabytes were found though. Well, claimed. claimed. I claimed, read. Claimed. It says claimed. None of this True. we know. All we know is that the site was up in 97. Oh, yeah. Everything's speculation. And 2012 yeah. was the last time it was seen on the internet. Yeah. That's it. All right. So that leaves us with, it's quite a bit of time. Terabytes could be We're, two terabytes. But that's five years. You're right. And terabytes could be two terabytes. Two terabytes. But two, yeah. two terabytes back then, like, terabytes weren't released to consumers back then. Yeah. You had you you had to have a server farm to be able to utilize that type of space. Let me ask you this: If, if hypothetically in this embedding where these guys supposedly found these files and they saw it was two terabytes or whatever the case may be, in the thirty nine gigabyte single file that they supposedly saw within the coding, is that something that? And and I'm gonna I have this question for a reason, but is that you guys with your knowledge? Is that something you can fake in the coding? The size? Like, can you? Again, I don't know. Like, and the reason I, I ask is because I, I think absolutely some, something I read stated that this was like a heavy time frame during the two thousands, where internet sleuths were like really it was a ramp up where a lot of people were building sites to try to mess with people. Uh, is this something that is realistically done? Like, can you can you fake that you have two terabytes of data? It is. I just don't see it done often. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, well, the, I just I just don't know. So there's I'm not curious. a lot of logic behind it, but yes, you can. Um, for instance, you can create a blank file that's worth or as big as you want it to be. You know. To appear as big as you want it to be. It'll be a corrupt file, meaning that it can't be opened or actually used. If no one's actually touching it, you would never know that it's real or not. I mean, it's just is this Bill Gates kicking back in his chair with a whiskey and a cigar going <laughs> Yes. No, nah, he would have charged country. a fee for it. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> Right, he'd been like, "Yes, you can log into my website. That's going to cost you, and there's yeah. a monthly subscription for that." Yeah, every um, every time I've you, already got licensed the server, so every time your bot hits me, that's twenty cents. And if you do it ten thousand times a second, you owe me. Pay up. Uh, so again, Mister Ling, whatever his name is, is out there doing whatever he's doing, and either he's doing it again, meaning, that, or not necessarily again, but he's re-upping these these domains, or somebody in his name is doing it because. The, the domain is still now, uh, the expiration I saw, I think it's 2025. Um, same name, same registrar, the whole work. Um, it's just that it's not live. If you try to go to mortis.com, you'll see it gives a 404 error. Anybody know what that error is by any chance? This means there's no response. This means nothing. Uh, nothing. No okay. Response. Okay. 
what what often means is that the the registrar that they hold the light or the so they probably let's say it's a GoDaddy or what it was what was it PlanNet or uh, Pair Network. Pair Network. So they go to that site, they have a C record or an A name, and they're sending it to there. Well, that server is no longer responding. So they probably haven't changed the redirect to go to that server. And that's what it is. I mean, the guy honestly could have thrown up a web page, just said nothing, or could have just been a black page. But he is legit taking that server offline. So the only reason you would do that is if you're no longer going to be using it or you don't want it to be tapped into. If, if, if there's a path to that server and it's still on, by this time, somebody would have gotten into it. So uh, as, we, as we close this up, I mean, I, we all have, I'm sure, general idea of our thoughts. You guys, again, know way more about the, the computer world than I do exponentially. But what are your thoughts that, that Mr. Ling is doing with these sites? I'm, or was well, doing, excuse me. Well, first of all, I'm convinced that it is Mr. Ling. Oh, okay. I, I know that it is Thomas Ling. That, like, how? The, you, don't, you don't get like this kind of... You see this? See this right here? These are all the registrars. Or these are all the people who are Thomas Ling. These are all the sites that are correlated with two. Yeah. And then we know that there's links between these. It's not far off to say that there's links between that one. Right. Just that one right there. Right, right. So I think that Thomas Ling is just pirating videos. Pirated videos until... He got some heat for it, not heat for it, but got attention. some popularity, some attention on Reddit and 4chan. Yeah. And was and all, also started seeing a ton of traffic come to his website and was like, uh, I'm out and unplugged his stuff in 2012. And then also went on the way back machine, redacted most of his websites so that people couldn't look him up anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, in 2011, we know, we 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 theorized based on what some Reddit users supposedly digged in that there was possibly two terabytes. So this dude just probably had millions of uploaded movies. And he only gave the username and password out to certain people. I mean, is that the, the case here? Yeah, I think it, he Just gave. Can't find any trace I think anywhere he was else. trying to either trying to make money or it was a family thing. I think it's more likely that he was making money because there's a ton of space on that that server. So, but so but, if you showed up for fillings, he handed you a little card and said, "He's like, hey, you like movies? You like you like Nicolas Cage movies? Yeah, I got one for you. Drive crazy, drive or crazy. whatever. Yeah, drive, drive angry, drive, drive angry. angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the file name was called Drive Crazy for some reason. Maybe that was it in the UK. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know, like, who knows? Japan, something like that. You want to watch the movie in Japanese? Hey, could be, could be. So you think Mr. Thomas Ling's real? He's yep. pirating some movies. Yep. Okay. If I'm pirating movies, I'm not using my real name. Yeah, I'll use aliases of whatever. Um, the multiple sites is a little questioning, but my my thought process is, I wouldn't be using my own name on my own site if I'm going to go through the part the part of logging, having it locked down. The Cthulhu thing throws me off. Like, what's the intent behind the Cthulhu? Dot net. That's the part that kind of throws me off the check mark. The check. That's what I'm saying. Maybe he's got other and other. That one is because okay. So look at when Cthulhu.net was made. It was made in 2004, and you can you know in the early 2000s is when it when domain reserving was at its peak. It was in the in the early 2000s when people were taking a like uh, popular name and domains, and they were just they were buying them for like a dollar. And reserving for them, and so they could sell them back for thousands, possibly later on when they become more right, popular. Because right. there's, oh, there's okay. only ones that exist. Like someone bought the Google domain, I think, in 2012 because it went off for like five minutes, yeah. and someone picked it up and sold it back to Google for a couple it thousand was, dollars. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he was just buying up domains, right. possibly, and because that was really but popular. But it had and stuff on it. Fun one. Yeah. No, 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 he had stuff on he it. He had a though. placeholder. He had like a chess. But when you clicked on the chess page, it did something, which means it required effort. That guy didn't just it was buy something and well, throw thing, something up. That's the thing. We don't even know if it actually had a chess page. So that's, that's just some sort of claim. Well, like I told you, I saw the snapshot. So the snapshot... Oh, no, is, there's, a, there's a snapshot of it. The snapshot doesn't have a chess piece, though. The snapshot just has... Well, I only looked at one. I, I, can, I looked at all of them. It's, the, just, it's just... The video I saw, the guy had the... He had the snapshot of the chess piece and the one saying dead but dreaming. And then the, looking again. The, the one says, it says dead but dreaming on there. But then when you go back further, it just said Cthulhu.net will be coming soon or something like that. And then it has like a picture of Cthulhu. And then that's, there's no chess piece on the, on the, at least on the way back machine. Maybe someone has some other photo, but. I guess. And, and so the guy's pirating. He's, he's using his real name, not using his real name. Who knows? Uh, I, I, the one I just keep getting hung up on is what I read. And I. I didn't dig this one. I should have dug this one, but it it said that the links to like the dental firm and the the law office, and again some part of Washington State and a security company, the addresses that were all connected to these, including the dental firm. When you look them up, they are empty lots. So not even the dental firm truly exists. Um. So again, uh, and when this you guys look- going to great lengths to to let people download some some Nick Cage movies. 
Yeah, no, and that's that's the that's part of the ominous thing where it's kind of like, yeah, when you look up uh, Thomas Ling, like a lot of different places, that person's either been dead before the registering oh, of yeah. the website. Yes, like that name, like that person's been dead for a long period of time, like right. years before the regist- register of the website. Mm. But um, and then the the names that you do find of the people who are alive, it leads to lots that are abandoned, where like abandoned warehouses or lots that don't don't aren't owned by anybody. Yeah, and it's very strange. And the only like real connection we have to a Thomas Ling is the one in San Francisco. Right. Well, I'll go a little deeper on that. I know we got to wrap this thing up, but yeah. um, Thomas Ling DDS is in, out of San Francisco. Right. Karen Ling out of San Jose. Jeffrey Ling out of San Francisco, but goes to NYU. Is 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 young enough to be a child of say Thomas and Karen? Mm. Uh, I didn't go into Je- uh, to Joshua, but I would assume that these are real people now. Whether or not they're the real people or people that they know of, we know that it, it, it's safe to assume that the person that created these sites lives in California. And if I'm going to pirate or do something illegal, I'm going to find a way to hide it. Yeah. So I would not use my real name and I would search vacant lot. So if I was going to use my real name, why would I point this at yeah, a blank site? So it's probably house. somebody that <laughs> they knew or didn't like or just had a reference of. And thought, I know all this information about them. I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to use a vacant lot so that it never ties back to them. Right? Yeah. Crazy stuff. If it were happening today, I think I would agree with you. But I don't know that back then people were. I do. Have you, you've not seen a lot of the movies back then. Did you watch The Net? The Net? Yeah. Good fun Andrew Bullock? Andrew Bullock? No. He's all okay. who? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. No, no. It, I would say hacking back then was probably a little bit more legit than it is like now. this isn't like your high-end, like, you know super crazy hacker guy you don't type. know that well i no no no. we have the internet speculation in the sense that people when people can't figure something out their brain goes way out there way out there hey, so it's easy for people to go oh there's terabytes but we have no proof of that hey listen this is my i'm just gonna throw this hypothesis out real quick before we close okay i think the ancestors of lovecraft truly know lovecraft wasn't writing fictional novels and we got some deep stuff going on so i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say we got it cthulhu He's out there. Yeah? No, maybe not. But but yet, but yet, but yet, <laughs> Cody, but yet Cody believes in the 70s birds were eradicated for robots. Yeah. 60s. But see, okay. see what I mean? Like, I just I just love some what? Lovecraft, man. Lovecraft, when I seen Cthulhu dot and I was like, yes. And it had a chess piece. That was great. Supposedly. Supposedly. Hey, stop killing my dream, Cody. Sorry, man. Facts don't lie. <laughs> Anyways, hey, Twisted World fans. When you're done listening to this episode, if you've heard anything about this or you have a thought on it, we'd love to hear it. If you know Mr. Thomas Ling himself, uh, go ahead and give him our link so uh, he can comment himself. We'd love to hear from him. Uh, We just, you know, we we won't ask him anything. We won't ask him about his movie. Maybe maybe he could send us a wedding photo. We'd love to see it. Anyways, hey, Twister World, we love you guys. As always, don't forget to subscribe, follow. And uh, hit those uh, media social media sites, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. LinkedIn? Uh, <laughs> what are we trying to get people to hire? We're trying to hire people? <laughs> That's coming soon. Anyways, uh, TikTok, Twitter, uh, hit us on those sites. Uh, subscribe, follow, Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify. We're on all of them. Check us out. We are out. Peace out.